Hello and welcome to lecture 9 where we're going to uh, start looking into how to use online social networks in the XMPV protocol uh, for nodes to discover and notify each other. So the idea in IPOP that makes it different from many virtual private networks is enabling a simple setup of VPN, uh, P2P VPN endpoints. And we leverage the fact that many users use online social networks routinely to select peers who they would like to communicate with, uh, let's say, on a public uh, online social network website. But instead of just communicating through a website, now with IPOP you're able to start communicating between your computers, between your endpoints. Now, online social networks have different implementations, proprietary uh, interfaces. We use a a well-known standard instead of a tie to any particular online social network. But it's possible if you'd like to create your own uh, interface to an existing uh, proprietary OSN API as well. So the standard we use is XMPP, uh, the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. It's a protocol that's used uh, for many uh, messaging chat applications. It's well suited for uh, short messages uh, between endpoints, uh, for interactive short messages between endpoints. And there uh, are OSNs that do provide XMPP services, and there are open source implementations of servers that provide uh, very good XMPP uh, handling capabilities. So what that means is you can deploy uh, IPOP and connect to a public existing XMPP service, for example, a Google uh, account service, or you can create your own uh, private XMPP service and manage your own uh, relationships. So recall from a user standpoint then the XMPP server tells us who the users are, who they're connected with, and provide a basis for IPOP to look up and discover and notify other users. Now we don't care how the XMPP server works as long as it follows the protocol uh, and IPOP does not prescribe how to set up connections that's done uh, on the server XMPP server side. What we do have is an interface that again allows IPOP to send notifications. For example, a node has come online, it tells all its friends that it's available, or when it wants to connect with another node, it sends the uh, connect message that I, I described uh, a few uh, lectures ago with uh, the ID of the user, with the public endpoints, and with the fingerprint of the certificate. So, IPOP then assumes that somebody is handling all the relationships and IPOP uses the XMP protocol to determine who to connect with and whether they are uh, friends with, uh, with you. It, it can authenticate to the XMPP service and the implementation again of the service is not prescribed. Typically this is done for a small scale VPN, could be a single server that you deploy on your own or a public existing public XMPP server. If you want uh, to design a replicated server, if you want to federate XMPP services, this is also possible for larger scale, for uh, more fault tolerant uh, and more available uh, VPNs. And IPOP really does not care how you implement the XMPP server as long as you can provide an endpoint uh, in the configuration file. So again, Alice and Bob will authenticate to the XMPP server. The XMPP server will have a local database that could be implemented as a SQL database, an LDAP, whatever way the XMPP server manages this information. But that will tell in this example that Alice and Bob are friends. Typically this can be managed either by an XMPP client, by a web interface, or by a command line interface in the local host that's running the XMPP server. I'll show you some examples for the eJabberD XMPP server, which provides these capabilities. But as far as IPOP is concerned, what it needs is to be able to authenticate with this server and for Alice to be able to send messages to her friends. So Alice can send now a message, I'm alive, I'm present, or she can send a that could go to all her connections, or she can send a message just to Bob saying, Bob, I'd like to connect to you. This is the endpoint of the machine that I'm using. And Bob should be able to also send a message to Alice. Hi, Alice, I'm here too. And this is the endpoint that you should try. And again, a P2P link eventually gets 
created between these two endpoints, either uh, through hole punching or through a uh, turn uh, relay. Uh, XMPP services, again, there's public services, uh, Google Talk, Jabber.org, uh, Duco.com, or you can deploy your own service. There's tutorials on our website that tells you how to deploy the eJabberD uh, service, and it's quite simple to do so. So you could set up a server for your, yourself, uh, if you have a VPN just for a single user, or for a group, for a department, for an institution. The simplest deployment is eJabberD. Uh, that's the one we recommend uh, if you're getting started with uh, using your own XMPP server in IPOP. The simplest deployment would be a single server uh, uh, running XMPP. That could be a virtual machine in the cloud, for example, that runs your XMPP server. It's also possible, again, to do redundant deployments, federated de uh, deployments. These are more complex, and you would have to understand better how to uh, manage uh, eJabberD to accomplish that. Uh, eJabberD also uh, provides this nice feature that it has a built-in uh, stun service. So if you're running IPOP and all your nodes are behind call nets and you're going to run your own eJabberD service, you may as well deploy your own stun services and not depend on any external infrastructure. Uh, eJabberD, you can set, set relationships. So A, Alice is friends with Bob. You can use an XMPP client uh, like the open source Pigeon. You can use the eJabberD web interface to create relationships, or typically the way you automate this is by using a command line interface. So the web interface will look like this. eJabberD has its own web uh, service, and you can come in and uh, create new users and map uh, relationships. Uh, the command line interface is the one that you're probably going to use if you're going to automate any of the uh, relationships. So this is accessible to the administrator of the XMPP server. For example, uh, the root user on a uh, server, uh, server's Linux host. There's a rich set of commands. You can look at eJabberD documentation, but basically you would look at the commands that allow you to create new users and establish relationships between users and query the status of users. And this can be a starting point for automating, again, the process of establishing uh, relationships. For example, for a virtual cluster that you deploy in the cloud, your users may be just one-time uh, users that you create on the XMPP service, once one user for each endpoint, and you create uh, one-time passwords, and you disseminate that to the virtual machines that you deploy in the cloud, and you create a group uh, VPN for these uh, virtual private cluster. Here are some basic commands you can start with uh, to set up your own XMPP server. To create two users, our uh, infamous Alice and Bob, you use eJabberD control to register Alice with a certain password. And you do the same thing for Bob. If you want to establish that Alice and Bob are friends, you're going to tell add to the roster that Alice and Bob are friends uh, using two commands, one for Alice and one for Bob. And this command, if you go on the server, will tell you which users are online, which users are connected to the XMPP service, which helps uh, debugging and, and determining if there's connectivity between uh, two, uh, two endpoints.